When you come to Edinburgh, make sure that you put St Giles Cathedral on your list of places to visit. It can be found at West Parliament Square off the Royal Mile. Now, strictly speaking, St Giles is not a cathedral, but is actually the High Kirk of the Church of Scotland. It was very briefly elevated to cathedral status by King Charles I in 1637, but the name has stuck ever since. Really, this is where visitors come to experience this architectural gem of Edinburgh. Most of what you see was actually built after 1385 when Edinburgh was attacked by King Richard II of England. Much of the city was destroyed and the cathedral was no exception. However, four central pillars inside the cathedral have been dated back to 1120, around about the time that it was founded by Alexander I. Now, when you visit the cathedral, you will find that it is free to enter. However, they do ask for a donation. Um, you'll get a brief history as you walk in, and then from there, if you want to, you can download the virtual tour onto your mobile phone. Well worth doing if you want to be able to follow what you're looking at inside the cathedral. In this section, you can see the fantastic vaulted ceilings. Um, you've got the, the nave of the church and then the aisles on either side, the north and the south aisle. From its earliest days, the church practiced the Roman Catholic faith, but by 1560, Thanks to John Knox, the Protestant preacher who you can see in this stained glass window, it became a Presbyterian Church of Scotland and remains so to this day. On the subject of the stained glass windows, they are considered to be among the best examples of Victorian stained glass windows in Scotland, thanks primarily to William Chambers, the Lord Provost of Edinburgh, and his restoration of 1872 to 1883. This stool is supposed to be a replica of a stool thrown by a common woman, Jenny Geddes, when the minister tried to read the common book of prayer, the English mass that was being imposed on the Scots by King Charles I. It was the start of a period of protest which resulted in the National Covenant being drawn up and signed by Presbyterians throughout Scotland. Here we can see the fantastic restoration carried out on the ceiling of St Giles in the colours of Scotland's national flag, the Saltire. From here we're looking back to the western entrance, into the original nave, and now we're looking into the original choir. Although the church is cruciform shaped and you would expect to find the altar at the eastern end, the altar, the minister's pulpit and indeed the organ are all situated on the crossing point of the transept arms. This is perfect for acoustics. This was all made possible when the numerous smaller side chapels were removed and St Giles became one unified place of worship. The organ that you can see here was installed in 1992 thanks to a very generous donation from Alistair Salveson, a wealthy businessman. It replaced the original organ from the time of William Chambers' restoration. As we pan around at the crossing point of the church um, with the organ off on the south side of the aisle, um, you'll see that there are four large pillars, actually larger than the other pillars in the remainder of the church. These are believed to be the original pillars from 1120. This side chapel here is actually a memorial to the Marquis of Montrose who supported the Royalist cause against the Covenanters. He was executed and his remains were eventually laid to rest here um, and the monument was erected over his remains. The next part of the church leads to the Thistle Chapel which I personally think is one of the most impressive areas of the church. What you can see here are the banners belonging to all of the present knights that belong to the Order of the Thistle. Now normally you can enter the Thistle Chapel but due to Covid it is not presently accessible. Instead, to give visitors a feel for what the chapel looks like, they have a 10 minute video that is run on a loop outside the entrance. Unfortunately, the sound on the video is pretty low. However, the background to the Order can be dated back to 1687 when King James VII of Scotland and II of England reigned. It continuously be dated back even further. James brought it back to life as a thank you to his closest supporters. James was a follower of the Catholic faith, something that didn't go down too well with either the Anglican Church um, or the Presbyterian Church of Scotland. This was his way of rewarding his closest supporters. Some say that he based the numbers of knights on Jesus and his twelve apostles, likening himself to Jesus at the head of his twelve knights. There are now sixteen knights plus the sovereign, presently Queen Elizabeth II. There is scope for additional knights to be appointed. However, it's the chapel which is more important, as the design and the detail that has gone into it is simply breathtaking. Sir Robert Lorimer was actually commissioned to design it, 
and it was first considered during William Chambers' restoration, um, but didn't come to fruition until 1906, when Lord Leven and Melville left a bequest for £40,000. A team of woodworkers, stonemasons, metal workers and painters were commissioned to create this chapel, and they worked tirelessly over a three-year period, and it was finally completed in 1911. The video doesn't really do the chapel justice, and it really does have to be seen in person. Here you can see the intricate detail of each of the stalls that the knights are seated in. Each stall also has their personal coat of arms attached to the back of the seat, as well as those of previous knights going back to 1911, when it was first opened. Finally, before leaving the church, make sure you stop at the statue of John Knox. Without his leadership, it is questionable if the reformation of the mid-1500s would have actually taken place. If any questions about St Giles Cathedral, please feel free to comment below or contact us at Edinburgh Cab Tours. Thanks for watching.